What's up, YouTube? Give everybody here representing the Movement Towards Improvement, and welcome back to the Player Profile Program, where we showcase golf influencers, story sticks, and score. This video is a Willow Weston, the BAG, where we showcase a player's clubs from wedges to irons to wizard driver to putter, and then we end this segment with a course challenge, nine holes where if the player bogeys, he's got to draw from the bogey bucket, pay the consequence. If they break even par, they win the prize. This week's guest is a good friend of mine. You guys have seen him on videos, Mr. Blair McKeithen. We've been making videos since. 2010, I believe. 2010, July 11th. Here we are, Vista Valley. Blair's gonna be choice of club. Driver. Filming Blair. We're gonna after he hits this, we're gonna send him to world's funniest home videos. Uh -huh. um, so we've been going way back, and like I said, you know, not, not a lot of things have changed. Our weight is still the same. We still weigh the same. <laughs> um, but Blair has a. Uh, gotten less hair and now I have a man bun so things tend to balance themselves out you guys so I'm really excited um, we're also going to be doing a giveaway this video thanks to T Claw actually a company down here in San Diego some really cool little training aids you can use on the putting green or range with that being said thanks to Steel Canyon for allowing us to film Steel Canyon beautiful place to come down here and watch you guys let's go meet Blair okay all right Blair take us through your BAG and well, show us what you play starting with this 1656 I got some homas, the new homas, uh, eight degree bounce on the 60, 12 degree on the on the 56 degree. Freaking love these wedges. I originally got the new TaylorMade spin wedges, which, which spun a lot and they're really nice and all, but like I ordered them with shafts that like I did not like. And then uh, I really needed shafts that's more important to me than the head. And so I ended up getting these Nippon 125 wedge shafts, which are like just super awesome. And um, I'm sold on them. I love these wedges. I love these shafts. And uh, I imagine I'll be home for a long time. And then my gap wedge is like last year's. A good friend of mine, Sam Sear, is sponsored by Homa. And he had one of these hanging around. And then I reshafted it. I put the a 125 S shaft on what here. What grips do you have on there, Blair? Um, these are the Lampkin grips. I have these on all, everything but my irons. And, uh, and, and these two wedges, actually, because these have these Homa wedges. And I kind of really like these. They, they have all these little ribs and stuff, and I feel them in my hands when I chip and stuff, and I really like that. And then for, you want to see my old irons? Why don't you hit a wedge for us? Sure. But, well, uh, let's hit. Tell us like where you're working, how you like to hit a wedge. Um, well, I guess I'll aim over here. It's not the same as our thingies, but we can make it do. Yeah, you guys, you can check this out. We got these cool alignment training aids. You can use them for alignment, ball position, path. T Claw shout out. We're actually going to be doing a giveaway, which is going to be really cool. Thanks to them for sharing that. Really appreciate it. Thanks, T Claw. Uh, as for how I like to hit wedges, it all depends on the shot. I've been trying to really explore my um, creative side on how to hit shots. So I, I feel a lot of my hands. So like I, I can't necessarily explain how I hit a wedge shot, but if I want to hit like a low draw or something. I'd actually even change my grip a lot, like, so I'll, I'll use an interlock grip on this one for like a low draw, put it in the back of the stance, and like, I really feel, going back, like the club and my hand are like similar, my right hand, and then it's just, boom, and kind of like bang it on the back. It's not banging on the back of the ball, but it, that's what it kind of feels like. So it's like a, a really simple motion where you just kind of take it back, and then go, like you hit that nice tight low draw right there. So you can hit that shot that kind of lands, skips, stops or spins left if you have a slope and if I want to hit like a like a low fade like a more of like a fadey kind of shot you never want to try to fade it with your wedges but like you can put it in front of your stance and then feel like the let the handle when the grip goes through and just kind of hold the target it's just like a, a shot you can have if you wanted to hit it a little higher a little softer you know and for those that don't know Blair is left-handed I am left-handed so th these Blair's are a little bit easier always for me. been somewhat of an artist, likes to draw, likes to write books. And I just say that because I think that works with somewhat of how Blair plays golf. He's very feely oriented and he likes to always shape the ball, more like a Bubba Watson than um, someone who's more mechanical. Yeah, and that was a problem that I had uh, when I was getting coaching for f the last five, six years and not getting any better is that like I kind of was chasing the straight ball and feeling like coaching and technical is what I was always missing. And I realized that's not the case. I mean, it, it took five years of me getting worse at golf to realize that that's not part of my DNA. Like, I am a shaper of the ball, and whatever my swing looks like is whatever it looks like. But if I hit the shot that I want, then that's what it works, you know? So, like, 
the amount of care that I put into how my swing aesthetically looks isn't there anymore, but it like automatically looks better because it's natural. So how, how big of a lesson is that, Blair, for the for these college kids or anybody who's well, who's caring about the aesthetics versus the actual performance? Well, it's bigger than you know because honestly, when both of us were kids, you know, like, like we, Adam Scott or well, you know, obviously Adam Scott has a, aesthetically a really good swing, yeah. and then. I, I think a lot of people in our age group got around to seeing Tiger grow and as a player and like how good everything he did was so technically sound and everything was so perfect and his short game was like super technically perfect. Mm -hmm. But then if you just listen to him talk now in his recent videos, he's like, yeah, like the shit that I'm doing with my hands and how I feel it isn't technically perfect, it's just how it is for him. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really important thing. And when I was in Thailand, you know, I'm playing golf with these Thai guys who have the gnarliest short game technique you'll ever see, but they're hitting the best shots. I mean, I'm talking guys who cast, throw, do crazy stuff. I'm like, well, you're, you know, there is no right way to hit a golf shot. Just hit the damn shot that you want to hit. You know what I mean? So I kind of learned a lot when I was there and I got exposed in Q school trying to be technically sound and realized that like, well, you know, I'm not a technically, I'm not going to be that kind of golfer. It's just not. So it was a big lesson for me to have, I had to experience a bad thing to get that back in my head. Like, okay, what am I as a golfer, you know? But I think it's really important for players who are going to be in college is when they're in junior golfers and you know, when you're a kid you get good by just sitting around and hitting shots and figuring out how to chip and pitch and yeah. you know what I mean? Like when we were kids we used to be like that and then it's so easy to go away from that because you see other people who you think have all their stuff together, other college students who have a coach and they've had a coach who are really good. You just have to find your own identity as a golfer and I think if you ever find yourself getting coached away from your identity, then you're gonna, you're you're not gonna get better. Hey guys, Gabe here. Just about to ship out the first batch of MTI wristbands. Just want to say thanks to all those who ordered and supporting the MTI tribe. It's growing. I know a lot of you guys have been rocking with me for a lot of years, so I appreciate you guys. And I really enjoy putting a labor of love into each and every order. So I personally package each wristband. I leave a personal note with each letter and I just let you guys know how much I appreciate you. So if you guys want one, check out the links down below. I'll have them available till Friday for the next three days, you guys, because I like to package them up and leave a personal note with each one, take some time. Just wanna say thanks, you guys. Appreciate you all. Well, yeah, we've seen players who are really good junior golfers. You wanna hit another one, Blair? Yeah, well, I'm gonna hit an iron, so. Well, but I was yeah. gonna say, we've seen really good junior golfers that we grew up with, and like, you don't know what you're doing as a kid. Yeah. Which is a blessing. Which is the bl absolute blessing. You don't know what you're doing conceptually. Yeah. Through the thinking head. You know what you're doing in your body. Yeah. And what you need to do to hit that shot. And then you ultimately see people go away from that and try to get more up in their heads and try to do it correctly and try to do right and try to improve. Um, and they get away from the instinct and the intuition, the feeling and the DNA like you're talking about. Correct. That's exactly what I did. A lot of people do that. Yeah. I mean, I probably most people do it, to be honest yeah. with you. And that's a big problem. So what irons are you playing right now? Um, so these are... My Wilson Staff FG Tours. Gabe, do you remember when I was in high school and I got sponsored by Wilson? Sure, absolutely. And then uh, I want to say, I clubs. yeah, two years after high school, this is the set that I got. Uh, what shafts are in there? My second set. I think these are X100s. Okay. Um, I, I do like these shafts, and the reason why I switched these from my TaylorMades is because I get more spin. I'm a low spin player, so like, if I can get more spin, the better. Then I can work the ball the way I want. Um, but I will, my next set, I will have some 120TX uh, Nippon shafts in them. Okay. I really like the way the Nippon shafts, they, they kick, the feeling in the shaft and when it kicks is different. These feel a little bit more like, it's like a slower kick. It's, it's hard to explain. Okay. But I do like these, I, but uh, I, I'm excited for my next batch. So this is my seven iron here. Okay, what are you working on with your seven iron? Same stuff with your, same, with your wedge? Basically same stuff. The wedge is more hands oriented. With my seven iron it is, it's just a side bend here. Okay. You know, keep this right arm from trailing high so I don't lift too much. I mean, I'm always going to lift. I think it's part of what I do, but like, I, I, it feels really good if I can just be like, like this, you know? Yeah. And then from here, it's just, boom, unload it and let it go, and that's it. Good ball there. Oh, yeah. Hit one, four more, one more for me, I'll get a face on. Okie dokie. When I practice too, like I'm hitting range balls and stuff, I really try to get big turns. And then gotcha. like damn the result, but it, you're trying to work on the feel, you know? So if you're ever trying to work on a feel, like really work on that feel. Because you're just on the range to work on feels. I mean, obviously, you know, you want to hit shots, but you're never going to hit it. For me, I never hit it as good on the range as I do on the golf course. Like I always hit it better on the course because I can see what I'm doing.
Okay, nice. Um, so I got a hybrid okay. now, which is good. Uh, this is a M2 from a few years ago, 22 degrees. And the reason I got the 22 degree is because the 18 degrees or 19 degrees go super far, like way too far. I need something that goes 240 and this launch is really high and spinny with, and goes 240 and I could also like put it in the back of my stance and hit like a low trap draw that actually rolls out. And so I got this uh, Kurokage shaft in there and then uh, X-Flex, very nice, 80, 80 grams, so nice and heavy. Um, other than this, I have a three iron, but depending on, I got this solely because I don't know what kind of, what I'm going to expect in Germany, that the greens, if things are going to be soft or what kind of tee shots I'm going to hit. So I wanted to make sure I put a, a different weapon in along with my three iron. So my three iron is out of the bag right now for this, but if I need to, I can just switch right back. Oh, that's a hook. Big time hook. There you go. He's loud. Okay, for woods, I got a tailor made M5. Big fan. This thing goes super far. Which, what degree is that? Uh, it is uh, 15 degrees, and I have it standard, so it's still 15. Um, the weight's a little bit more on the toe. And that's for a shaft. I got a Fuji Atmos 7X. And um, yeah, Bucky, a tailor made, requested this and built it for me. And uh, I do like it because it's not like a super knuckly three wood, which is really important. Any right. Looks good. All right, Blair. So we moved the T claw around, which was really cool. Yeah. Tell us what's going on here. Well, we moved the T claw around, and what's really cool about it is there's little holes right here, and you can stick your T in the ground which is like really tea, awesome. Yeah, your, your tee can go in the device. Yeah, I just really played um, a tournament actually on Monday, so two days ago, and there wasn't a place for me to stick a tee, so that was, I could have really used this thing. Um, oh yeah, M6, I got it uh, a one, a little, like a quarter degree higher um, for the standard loft. Okay. Kudokage, same as my hybrid with a, with a 60 Turex shaft. Okay. I got this shaft from Sammy Chi when we were in Bangkok. And uh, it's mine now. Sammy Chi still in town? Uh, he's in Chicago for a wedding, but he's been in town though. We've been playing a lot of golf with him. Woo, that was nice. Yeah, that one was really good. Plus, check it out. You don't even lose your tee. Did it just like come back over this way? Oh, nice. It's in my shoe, but. Ah, sweet. That was hammered. Yeah, I've gained a lot of speed and distance in the last uh, month and a half or so. Maybe uh, I'd say like the last month. So I've been working out really hard and then uh, I'm trying to gain weight. So I've been taking like this mass gainer and I went from 138 pounds to 142 pounds and I've never been 142 pounds in my That's life. That's good. So my goal is to get to 150. But I mean, I've, I've probably gained like five miles per hour in ball speed since I started just gaining four pounds, so, which is really cool. And also, like, the things I'm doing in my swing are allowing for more speed. Mm. I think this feeling of that is, like, really getting that extra little bit of whip in there. Shot. Huh, this thing went behind me. It would have been cool to have this in, like, slow motion as it takes off. Good shot. Thanks. Hey, we're, you're good. Uh, you want to see the putter? Yeah. As you can see from the head cover, it's an arm lock putter, which is a, a lifesaver. I've actually had this thing for quite some time. I got it maybe um, maybe a month after I got back from Asia, mm -hmm. and I haven't changed it. 
Um, I hold it pretty funny too. Like, like I put my uh, put it like kind of in the lifeline in my right hand, okay. and then in between the lifeline in my left hand. But then like I kind of like grab my wrist, like the old Bernard Langer grip. And then you know, since me being left-handed, this really helps. Like if you're just holding this angle, holding the angles. The only difference is like, you know, how you control distance is completely different. It's not necessarily in your hands as much as it's like body rotation. Gotcha. So I'm always working on certain little things to make sure that I keep the tempo smooth and nice. But it's a, uh, it's been great. I mean, I probably say my tournament scoring average since I got this putter is like 69 or 68 or something like that, gotcha. which is pretty good. So it's been a big help. Okay, let's see what's inside the bag. Um, as for what's inside, I obviously got my uh, range finder, my Bushnell. I've had this for a while. Hopefully it doesn't break. Um, this sweet ping bag uh, has got a nice little spot for it. Obviously got my wallet and keys in this pocket. Got my Sharpie. Um, I usually carry like a sweater or something in here, but I just got my glove. I've been using these TP Flex gloves. They're really nice, nice and light. and airy and then oh, yeah. this pocket i keep my good balls and um what ball do you play i play the 2017 pro v1 and um i hate the new 2019 pro v1 so like i don't know what i'm gonna do okay. so i've been trying actually some new balls because like i think i got like two dozen left and those are like the last ones i could find unless i drive to la so i tried like balls like these bridgestones mm -hmm. that tiger plays which are really good around the greens but just terrible off the tee and on the long clubs um, these were my chipping balls, so like all the balls I use for a round or something, I'll just throw them in here and I'll chip. I carry my tees in here, so that's always nice. And then, as for this packet, got like my tailor-made tool, got me some, uh, some chapstick. I actually have mints in here for some reason. I got this from like some charity golf tournament. In case you see some women after <laughs> Yeah, round. you know, they love, they love mints. They love mints more than they like me. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Literally, that's, that's all I got in my bag. It's a new bag, and I like it. It's light. I like it. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching now. What's in the bag? Appreciate Blair showing us what he plays, his clubs, and inside the bag, and sharing his journey once again. You guys, we're doing a giveaway thanks to T-Claw. Really cool training aid you can use on the putting green or the range. Um, really versatile, very simple. Go to Instagram, follow T-Claw, links down below. Follow myself, we, I do all my giveaways on Instagram, you guys. Appreciate your support, thanks for Steel Cannon for allowing us to film here. What city are we in? We are in San Diego. San Diego, if you guys are around, check out Steel Cannon. Beautiful course, beautiful place. This is Blair's home course. Um, yeah, you guys, so be prepared. We're gonna do the course challenge. Have some more videos coming for you. Let's do it.